Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, there is stigma and there is shame, but now the hidden experience of some men who are made to have sex with women against their will has been revealed by the first major study into the issue. Research by Lancaster University shows many of the men affected were blackmailed or threatened, with some subjected to physical force. The vast majority of men hadn't reported it to the police, even keeping silent to family and friends. And just to warn you, there are some distressing details in this report by our correspondent, Kieran Jenkins. This is a man who exists in one of society's blind spots. His face, scarred. It's unlikely you'd guess why and how. For me, the, the label I now give it is abuse. I was forced into intimacy that I did not want to engage in. Ian McNichol wants to talk about what he says goes unspoken. Not because of the violence of the assault, but the gender of his attacker. You've got my face here. I mean, I'm just unrecognisable here from the person I was before I met my perpetrator. And as I look today, and we've got fractured cheekbones, and my nose is shattered. I've actually had the septum replaced. Ian's former girlfriend here, beat him, burned him with an iron and boiling water. While she was convicted of grievous bodily harm, Ian claimed she used violence to force him to have sex against his will, an experience few men have spoken openly about. What was it like emotionally, having to be intimate with somebody who just beaten you up? Absolutely awful. You just imagine your cheekbone being fractured, your eyes closing. You're in fear, you don't feel attractive, you've got no emotion for the individual, yet you have to be intimate. You dig inside yourself to the very depth it takes every ounce of energy. Every ounce of energy. It is the case that the vast majority of perpetrators are male. But just like in this government awareness advert, rarely do we consider the possibility of a female sexual attacker and a male victim. The law itself doesn't recognise females as being capable of committing rape. There is definitely a stereotype. So normally the idea it's a man who attacks a woman who's perhaps walking home late at night in the dark along the canal or the river or in the park. Siobhan Weir has just completed really what may be the first study of its kind, investigating um, sexual attacks committed by women on men. Park. There is this sort of laddish notion, isn't there, that for men any sort of sexual intercourse is always a good thing? Yep, absolutely. I mean, this idea of the lucky boy syndrome, that um, all men should enjoy all sex all of the time, very, very pervasive. And what are the effects of that? Again, so the, the idea that if men said, actually, you know, I didn't consent to this, um, I was not happy to participate in this, the idea that they would be laughed at, that they wouldn't be believed. Siobhan's team surveyed over 150 men who said they'd been sexually assaulted by women. They found the most common strategy used by the attackers was blackmail and threats. But one in seven cases was violent, the attacker having a weapon or using physical restraint. The majority of men questioned didn't tell their friends or family about the abuse. Just two men went to the police. Neither case made it to court. Do you appreciate there will be some people who who, who do doubt and they say that you know, these sorts of offences are more serious when they're committed against women by men. Absolutely. And in having this conversation, I am an absolutely clear in no way trying to take away the experiences of women who experience violence from men. It's about opening a conversation to develop our understanding of broader and, and underreported and underdiscussed forms of sexual violence. Does it sadden you that this is still considered by some people to be something of a joke. Yes, and certainly we've seen examples where men have been abused and they've, and they've been laughed at. And I think what, what I would say is, how would you feel if that was your father, your brother or your son? Abuse is abuse and it's really painful. Ian hopes his story may encourage others to come forward. 
to shatter what he calls one of the last taboos. Kieran Jenkins reporting there. I've been